preserve me. These words are not spoken. by just an animal. This petition is not made by a just any old guy. But it was made by David, the king of Israel who reigned over both the northern and the southern kingdom. All of God's people. Meaning that all he had to do was just speak a word. And what such a mass of people could do pertaining to him, it was done. and all the gold, cattle of a thousand hills and, and way over 10,000 blessings. And he walked in. Damn! Carried the power of life and death on his tongue. And here, such a static of a person speaking such words an invisible God. Sits high, looks low, but invisible. Has no physical presence. Preserve me. Oh God. For in thee do I put my trust. Not in silver. Not in gold. Not in cattle of a thousand years. Not in all the blessings in which he can reap from and through his Just by speaking a word. But in thee. Do I put my trust. Preserve me. Oh God. in thee do I put my trust. Wants nothing more than a poor shepherd boy, watchman and keeper over his father's sheep. But because of his spiritual mindset, his spiritual personality, attitude, because of his faith. He became what he now is. And he knew that what it took to get him to where he is is going to take to keep him there. My grandfather used to always tell me, he boy, if you give the average Negro 
a dime more than a cab fare home. You forget where you came from. I'm so glad this morning that I'm not one of those Negroes. I know where I came from, and I know the vehicle that transported me to where I am. I'm here because God said, let me be in existence. And in all other areas of my livelihood, I'm there because God said those same words, let it be. Preserve me, O oh God, for in thee do I put my trust. So let us take on this thought. I want to speak very briefly about the preserving power of God. The preserving power of God. To preserve means to keep alive. To maintain or to sustain. To preserve means to keep from hurt or from injury. To preserve means to keep alive. To maintain or to sustain. To keep free from hurt or from injury. And we find in our scripture reading this morning where King David is crying out to God through prayer. Petitioning God to preserve me. To keep me. Maintain me. Sustain me. Keep me free from hurt and from injury. And Black's Chapel, when we give ear to David's petition. When we give ear to David's prayer. It sounds like David is praying a very selfish and self-centered prayer. It sounds like David's only concern is that of self-preservation. gifted 
gifted man. And David had the gift of spiritual discernment. And David knew that the most deadly and the most dangerous enemy that could ever come upon him or upon his people would not come from some foreign land. Would not come from some foreign country bearing a sword and a spear. But David knew that the most dangerous and the most deadly enemy that could come upon him and upon his people would be birthed out of their own loins. Out of their own lineage. Out of oneself. So David is crying out to God, oh preserve me Lord, keep me, maintain me, sustain me, keep me safe from hate or from injury. Oh Lord, don't allow me, don't allow me to become my worst enemy. Don't allow me to self-destruct. had the gift the spirit of discernment he knew that the most fierce and the most deadliest enemy that could come upon himself or upon his people that God had placed him as a steward over would not come from no foreign entity bearing a sword and a spear but that he would be bifed or she would be bifed out of one's own lawn Brass Chapel, there are two different spirits that lives inside of each and every one of us. One is the Holy Spirit and the other is an evil spirit. And the Apostle Paul speaks of them both. Paul called that evil spirit that old man. And that Holy Spirit, he called that new preacher. And that old man will do all and use anything that he can to take back that which the Holy Spirit has taken from him. To take back that which the Holy Spirit has taken back from him. Take it from him. And when Paul spoke of that Holy Spirit, he said, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. He acquired a new walk, a new talk, a new personality, a new behavior, a new attitude, a new mindset. And that old man is out to take back from you that which the Holy Spirit has taken from him. He's out to take back your new walk, take back your new talk, take back your new personality, take back your new mindset, take back everything that the Holy Spirit taken from him. He sat out, he would do all that he can and use anything that he can to take back that which the Holy Spirit has taken from him. David knew that the most dangerous and the most deadliest enemy that could ever come upon himself or upon his people would not be birthed from a foreign land, but it would be birthed out of their own loins. And he would not come bringing a spear and a sword, but he would come operating under the old wrong spirit. He would come not with a sword or with a spear. But he would come operating under the influence of a wrong spirit. Oh, yeah. That's why Paul told the church that in Rome. The good that I would, I do not. And the evil that I would not, that I do. Every time I set out to do good, evil is always present. Oh, reckoned man am I, who shall save me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, because with my mind I serve the law of God, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. Oh, what a blessed state of being there is to be in. To be in that state of being, where you no longer have to over-concern yourself over your present state of being.
put in blessed state of being to be in. When you're in that state of being, when you no longer have to over concern yourself over your present state of being. Meaning, oh, how blessed it is to be being preserved by the Lord. Because, black shackle, when you're being preserved by the Lord, you have hope to an anchor that's going to hold. You're standing on a rock that cannot be moved. You're walking in a truth that cannot be broken. And this God that we serve, there's an anchor that's going to hold. He's a rock that cannot be moved. He's a truth that cannot be broken. And the best investment that one can make in one's life is to buy into God, tie into God, sell out to God. Because when you sell out to God, you receive an exchange for yourself. You receive an exchange for yourself. Some peace that surpasses all understanding. You receive some unconditional love. You receive a way out of no way. You receive some amazing grace when you buy into, sell into, and sell out to God. And then you can be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Knowing, Black Shepherd, so regardless of what you may be experiencing in the today chapter of your life, know this, Black Shepherd, know this, that whatever you experience in the day, in the today chapter of your life, your God doesn't have to deliver you out of it in order to save you. Your God can save you while allowing you to remain therein. Meaning that your God can give you some stick to itness and some stay with itness. God can develop inside of you a tenacity to just hang on in there. Hang on in there. That's why the songwriter wrote, Now, Lord, you don't have to move my mountain. Just give me the strength to climb. You don't have to take away my stumbling block. Just lead me. Lead me all around. And let me tell you something, Black Shepherd. When you've been led by the Lord, sometimes the Lord will lead you through the wilderness to get you to the promised land. Sometimes he will lead you through the storm to get you to the peace. Sometimes he will lead you through the famine to get you to your blessing. And sometimes he will lead you through what you're presently going through. Sometimes he will lead you through a pandemic to get you where he willed you to be. And while doing your going through season, doing your going through season, know this right here. That your personal relationship with the Lord is not based upon what you are experiencing in the today chapter of your life. But your personal relationship with the Lord is based upon what God did for you through Christ on Calvary. And on Calvary, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. On Calvary, he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity, and the chastisement of our peace rest on his shoulders and by his stripes by his stripes by his stripes we are healed and my question to you this afternoon black chapel have you been washed have you been washed are you being preserved by the lord have you been washed in the blood of jesus have you been washed until you water his snow by god if you've been washed if you've been cleansed if you're being preserved by the blood of jesus you ought to make some noise out here you ought to give it up to god you ought to give it up to God for preserving you, keeping you alive, maintaining you, sustaining you, keeping you from the right home and death. It's me, oh Lord. It's me who's standing in the need of you. Because my greatest enemy, my greatest foe, is not going to come upon me from, from some, some foreign land, some foreign country bearing a sword and a spear. But my greatest enemy, my most deadly, my most devastating enemy that can come upon me will be birthed out of my own loins, will come forth from my own lineage. Keep me, Lord. Preserve me. Maintain me. Sustain me. Keep me from hurt and harm. Don't allow me to become my worst enemy. Don't allow me to self It wasn't a selfish prayer. It was a spiritual insight into spiritual enlightenment. Preserve. 